welcome back. The truth is, I've been here the whole time. Surprise, but welcome back to you. I'm Ryland from Brains for Photography, where we are all about creating confidence for the wedding photographer. And so today we're gonna to be going through part six of our Lightroom series, um, where we're gonna be talking about a few expert tools, really specifically dialing in to color, managing color for skin tones and for greens. As wedding photographers, we're constantly taking pictures of people, so skin tones is incredibly important. We're also constantly taking photos outside. And so, especially we live in the South, it is green as green as green as green in the summertime, and you've gotta be able to manage that and deal with that well. And so we're gonna be focusing on those two points, skin tones, and how to manage greens. So let's dive right in. Yes. start by looking at a few photos that we took at a family intimate wedding just a few weeks ago. Um, this was an outdoor wedding because COVID, but it was incredibly beautiful. There were a ton of greens, and so we're going to look at a few of these photos to figure out how do we treat these massive greens and how do we make sure that their skin tones look perfect in these photos. We're not necessarily going to come out with the perfect edit at the end, but my goal is to show you all the different tools that you have in your Lightroom toolbox and so we're really gonna focus on the color uh, effects in these photos, not so much all the other tools. So let's dive in. We've got this photo right here. As you can see, it's pretty dark to begin with. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lighten it up. So there we have like the exposure balance, but there's a couple other things that we still have to do. Eh, a little bit of straightening too. Um, because the greens are still incredibly intense. And if you look at their skin tones, they look a little blue um, to me. Uh, a little maybe greenish and that's because surprise they've got green cast all over them from all the grass and that they're surrounded by and so that's really what we're going to focus on today now uh, and we're going to start at the top and work our way down through the various tools that we have to affect our color so the first thing is just our white balance we can do a ton with the white balance um, we can make the photo a lot more warm I mean, we can make it super warm we don't want to burn it out too much let so maybe put it like right around here it makes their skin tones look a little bit, uh, not quite sure, but it gives it gives me um, the right depth of color in the green that I think that we'll want, the right like temperature of the, of the green, because then we can affect the actual tone of the green as we go. So we'll maybe use the tint to, to counter some of that um, just really yellow orange result that we got there um, a little bit. And then we'll start moving down to some of the other tools. But really, I mean, the point is, white balance is your, always your first thing. Then you can come down, and the next tool that we have is the tone curve. We've talked about this a few times in our other videos, but you've got red, green, and blue, your four, three primary colors. Um, for red, remember that uh, this is kind of your blacks, shadows, mid-tones, highlights, whites, moving from left to right. And so adjustments you make down here on the left-hand side will affect the shadows. And adjustments you make up here will affect the, the, the highlights. If we wanted to, we could adjust, bring up the reds just a hair, um, try to make these greens nice and warm. Um, and then we can actually go into green itself. Going up just makes a more vibrant green. Coming down makes it more red. And one of the thing that we want to maybe think about is do we really want to uh, make this, do we want to keep any blue in the sky? Um, and so here maybe we could take our blue slider and we could bring some of the, turn some of the highlights blue, but we could adjust it down in the middle to keep kind of the green, the mid-tones, uh, more of that green color that we wanted. So those are some of the things you can do with the tone curve. This gets a little more, um, complicated because it's a little bit more difficult to control, um, uh, because there's a million different options. Um, so the next thing that we want to look at where you have a little bit more control is the HSL sliders. And remember, one of the key tools here uh, is this uh, spots adjustment tool. Um, I click on the skin tone and it'll automatically select the various colors which are affecting their skin tones. Spoiler alert, skin tones are primarily controlled by orange and red. Mostly orange, a little bit of red, occasionally some yellow, uh, depending on the kind of the reflected light you have, uh, but, but primarily orange. And so going up makes things a little bit more green, going down makes things a little more red. As you can see, 
what you, you can do the same thing with the saturation. So say I want to, because there's so much green cast and there's so much color, we may want to take the saturation down a little bit just to kind of like tone things back a little bit. Um, so for their skin tones, that maybe looks a little bit more natural, but I probably want to do that with the greens too, so I can do that same thing. Say I want to, I want that warmth in the greens, but I don't necessarily want them to be the colors to be so intense as they were. You can kind of see off on off on. Um, it really really affects, especially the green. This is a way to kind of keep the warmth from the white balance, maybe cut back on on the vibrancy of that of that green. And then finally is the luminance. The luminance tool is an exceptional tool for being able to lighten people's faces without really lightening anything else. Remember, people's skin tones are almost entirely controlled by orange and red, and so you can very easily isolate people's skin, bring up the luminance, and therefore basically, essentially, bring up the exposure on someone's face without bringing up the exposure in the rest of the image. That can really help your subject pop as a wedding photographer when you're taking portraits. Same thing with greens. Um, by increasing the luminance here a little bit, I can just make this photo look a little bit more bright and full. Um, notice, interestingly here though, is that these greens are primarily controlled by the yellow rather than green, like we would think. And that's because just there was so much golden sunlight in this moment, on this afternoon, uh, that, that 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 green color was really primarily driven by the yellow baseline. And then the final effect that you can that you have for green is actually in this calibration tab. And this is <clears throat> basically, it is Adobe's calibration of these primary color channels of red, green, and blue. <clears throat> and so it's, these will affect the more of the photo overall. Some of the other adjustments that we've made are more specific to just the greens or just the oranges or just the yellows. So the only thing it maybe really doesn't affect is the sky. Um, but <clears throat> this is another way that you can create more of a holistic color effect across the whole photo. So we've just looked at this photo and really focused on our greens. Now let's look at more of a tight portrait and talk about more of the skin tones themselves. This is in the same context. This bride was uh, out in that field, surrounded by green, surrounded by yellow. And so we are going to adjust this photo though, primarily for her skin tones rather than for the greens like we did on the previous one. So we're gonna apply a couple basic things. And so now we've kind of got this where we want. Now we want to, uh, again, walk through that same process. Start with the white balance and work our way down all the way to calibration. And so we're gonna start with the temperature here, bring it up to a temperature that, um, that looks a little bit more kind of like the right level of warmth that we want in the photo. Remember, because you're surrounded by green, it's going to accentuate the green cast on her face, but that we can treat later. So we really wanna focus on the right level of warmth that we want at this point, because then we can kind of tweak the actual color cast um, over the next few steps. So I like this level of warmth. So let's move on down to the tone curve. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the reds here because I, her face looks a little bit green to me still. Um, so I'm maybe gonna add a little bit of red um, to those highlights. Uh, just to the highlights primarily, because that's really what's gonna affect her face the most. I'm probably actually gonna leave these greens alone. Um, so I'm gonna go down to my HSL uh, sliders. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna affect the hue on her face here. This looks a little, she, her face still looks pretty red to me, um, which is not what we want. <coughs> um, and so we want to bring this up um, we don't want it to be green. See, wow, that makes it way too green, but we also don't want it to just be like red, red, red. Um, so that looks a little bit more natural. The only problem is that it still looks pretty saturated. So let's come down to our saturation. Let's hit our saturation, maybe bring that down a little bit, um, just to where it looks a little bit more natural. And then finally we can come down to the luminance uh, and we can brighten it up a little bit more. And now that I've kind of adjusted the saturation and the luminance a little bit, I actually think I might go back and adjust the hue a little bit, a little bit more even. Now we've got, I think, skin tones that look a lot more natural. So let's do something with these greens, because these greens are so strong that they're a little distracting to me. So the first thing is that I like that warmth, but they're a little too, too saturated. So let's bring down the saturation a little bit. So just by making that small adjustment right there, I feel like we were able to have a much more well-balanced photo 
where her skin tones look right, the greens aren't distracting, they're more complementary, which is what you want your negative space in a photo to be. But now let's come down to the calibration and see if there's just anything else that maybe adds a little bit more here. Maybe we could add a little bit of gold here. It's kind of what that seems to be doing. Um, so let's maybe add a little bit of green or blue saturation here, just because it seems to warm the photo a little bit more. Um, you can see that. And then I think the last thing that we'll do is we'll come back up to our white balance and just make sure that we still like it the way it was. And so there you go. We've gone through all the different color corrections that we have in order to take a photo that was originally like this and turn it into something like this, which is a huge difference looking at them just totally side by side. Um, wow. The exposure, the color, um, the balance of colors is just completely different. Uh, and you can see how we took a raw photo, which sometimes is hard to imagine how it's going to look, how it's going to come out amazing, and really turn it into something beautiful uh, just using some of these basic tools in Lightroom. So friends, I hope that you found that clear and helpful and super interesting. If you have any questions or comments or just want to share some of your success or are still struggling with something, leave us a comment. We'd love to engage with you and help you grow in your confidence as a wedding photographer. Make sure to subscribe so that you catch our next video as soon as it drops. We're going to be talking about shooting to edit. There are definitely some things that we have learned along the way in shooting our photos that have set us up for so much more success downstream in post-processing than we ever would have imagined. So you definitely don't want to miss it. Subscribe so that you make sure to catch that next video as soon as it drops. And we'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in, friends.